Welcome to Greenie's Garden. Hey, what's up, Green Army? It's Brandon and Alyssa. Hey, guys. And we hope all of you guys are having an awesome day today. A really exciting video because it has to do with our friend here at Greenie's Garden. So for those of you who's followed us for a while, you guys have an idea who Happy is. And for our new subscribers, think of this as an introduction to our friend Happy. Happy is our African Spurred Tortoise, also known as the... Sulcata Tortoise. Sulcata Tortoise. I mean, you guys won't believe, but this little guy right now is the third largest tortoise. So we got to get right into it because Happy is actually eating right now. So let's go check it out real quick. Don't want to scare him. <laughs> hey, Happy. Can we put you on camera, dude? So it looks like right now, Happy is eating a Roselle. This is a type of hibiscus that creates a little fruit after it closes <laughs> up. He loves these. <laughs> Look at his little tongue. Guys, it just, it drives me crazy to understand that how awesome Happy is. I mean, Happy can live to be 70 plus years old. Can you guys believe that? He can get up to potentially 200 pounds. Yeah, the, one of the oldest, <laughs> I mean, that's definitely with age. So a tortoise that is that size is very, very old, but wise. So just because he's old doesn't mean nothing, huh, Happy? I just love the attitude of Happy because he's so slow. But he's so powerful. I mean, we were talking to one of our good friends about Happy. I want to pick you up, dude, but I don't want to bother you. We were talking to one of our good friends about Happy, and it was so cool to talk about how powerful the tortoises are, but not only how powerful, but how gentle they can be. Happy's main diet is grass, like, believe it or not. Um, we, he loves this Bermuda grass here, but it is going out of season right now. Um, you know, so again, that's 70% of Happy's diet should be, you know, grasses. He's 100% vegetarian. Right, Happy? Are you vegetarian, Happy? He's like, oh man, they're putting me on camera. I'm <laughs> out of here. <laughs> he likes lettuce and moringa, or mulberry leaves, and grape leaves, and kale. Hey, buddy, can I pick you up for a second now? Here, let's show everybody how awesome you are. He has gotten so much bigger than the last time that we showed uh, Happy to you guys. So, Happy's about three years old, would you say? Yeah, we've had him for like two and a half years, and he was just a little guy when we first got him. <laughs> what juice on your face? What's that on your face, Happy? But no, one thing I love about him is his shell. Like it's here. I'll try to give you some some ground here. I love Happy's shell. I don't know. Again, it's just it's so fascinating how Happy could be so gentle, but when he needs to hide, um, you know, he he could just go into this shell. It's like it's like a RV. If you can say, he like lives in his shell. It's so awesome. Um, but yeah, guys, can you believe that Happy can live to be 70 plus years old? I mean, Happy's probably going to, you know, be the one to own our house and our vehicles after a while. And he's still going to be just hanging out here at Greenie's Garden. This is his little area. Yeah, let's kind of put him down Step here. back a little yeah. bit. There you go, buddy. Go back to food. So this is Happy's uh, enclosure here. Again. Happy is going to get bigger than what he is now. Um, you know, especially giving him a good diet of the grasses. He, he grows fast. Um, you know, one thing that real quick Happy likes also is... Watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. That, we give him watermelon as a treat. Yeah, pretty much every summer. Every summer. But when you give him the watermelon, guys, it's the one time you get him to run. So maybe we will be able to show you guys when we give him a watermelon treat next summer. Um, it's just a really cool thing to see him kind of, you know, go crazy for the watermelon. Yeah, he starts running around and he's kind so, of acting crazy. <laughs> he's so awesome. We have this cool fountain for him. It's not running right now. Yes. We have to clean it out. I think it got dirty. Yeah, so one thing about having, like, you know, a smaller fountain here is it needs more maintenance, which is okay. Uh, but what we do is when we normally clean it out, we have it turned off for a day. Um, you know, just to kind of get nice and clean up here. One thing, though, speaking of water is, is we have a backup little uh, water, I guess, water sprinkler over here. Um, just because he's a desert tortoise does not mean that he doesn't need water. Yeah, he's not a cactus. Right. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's not a cactus. Uh, you know, I definitely believe in, you know, make, giving him a water source. I mean, he's a living, breathing animal. Let him decide when he, you know, wants water. Right. But you got to have the source there. So this is one thing we love to have here because whenever Happy's thirsty, it's not what we, when we think he's thirsty, he can go ahead and make that decision himself. Um, another thing also is 
Happy is okay with, you know, full sun, but give him a shade area. You know, let your tortoise decide when he wants a little bit of shade from the hot summer months, especially in Arizona. Um, <laughs> look at Greeny. <laughs> okay. And this is Greeny too. She wants to be right here. Um, one thing about Happy too is I wanted to say, what's I gonna say? Um, I'm blanking here. You're just talking about how he needs shade. Right. And sun. Right. Probably burrowing? Burrowing is, yeah, one thing he does too. Because uh, he really wants to find that humid area is what I, I guess you could say. Yeah, so in the summer, um, a lot of animals that live in the desert go underground because it's cooler. And then he's right here. Oh. And then in the winter, it's warmer underground. So he hasn't really started building much of a burrow himself yet. Yeah, there's a little one that's over here, but we kind of like just put a wood top on it. And he kind of is just digging a little bit underneath. So yeah, his burrow can get big. Um, you know, one thing that we did a lot of research on, people put flagstone or like a concrete base. So they'll dig the hole out, put concrete as the foundation, you know, and kind of fill the soil back up. That way he can't dig, you know, too far underground. And I actually, I crawled into a tortoise tunnel one time. I know. Um, which looking back now was stupid because who knows what else would have been down there. But it was about 20 feet long and kind of shaped like an L, like a capital letter L. So... One day we're gonna to need to expand his little area. It was so big, it was really crazy to, to you know think that tortoises can dig that far down and that deep. He's uh, just walking around underneath you now. Yeah, he's just hanging out here. We kind of had this little area right here that we kind of flood. Um, because one thing I know with Happy is if you give your tortoise a water dish, something he can go into, you gotta be careful because he can poop into it. You know, a lot of research is, you know. Once you kind of submerge him underwater, it really relaxes him and it kind of helps him, you know, go to the restroom, if you want to say. What you're supposed to do um, when they're babies is just kind of soak them in a little bit of water. Give them a little bit of help. Yeah, just kind of help that, that system start going. Right, so it's really <laughs> what you want to do. Um, but yeah, guys, just make sure, you know, if you decide to take on a Sokata tortoise, they do get big. I mean, you can't deny it. Go Google it, do some research on them. They're fascinating animals. Um, but you know, they need your care. So you know, just because they're a desert tortoise, don't just you know, think that they don't need water for long periods of time, that they don't need any shade. Really create an area you know, that where you give him shade. Again, I can't say it enough, but let him decide when he's thirsty and if he needs a little bit of shade. So Kata tortoises, the temperature that they're really uncomfortable is about like 45 degrees. Yeah, and it's been getting down to about that at night, so since he's still a baby and he doesn't have a big burrow, right. he comes in the house with us. He comes in the house. We have a, a cool little, like, I guess it's called like a little kiddie pool. Yeah. And then what we do is we just set him in there so he's a lot warmer in there because he ideally liked to be at like 70 degrees. And you could use a heat lamp. True. Good point. Um, Good point. You can, you know, put a heat source outside. Um, I just don't know what other reptiles that could bring to your yard, so I mean... And we're running out of extension cords. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, one cool thing too is, you know, I, I believe we still have a couple more years with Happy, you know, until he really gets that, that huge size to where we're going to make his enclosure a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is, you know, of course, expand his area. Um, that way he can, you know, venture out to the yard a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I, I just love Happy's company. It's so cool to come out here and just really watch him and see how he moves slow but he's so gentle at the same time um you know I, I just have a lot of respect for tortoises and just you know just make sure you're taking care of your tortoise guys and i don't know i just love having happy here at greenie's garden he just really fits the vibes he's so chill yeah he's so awesome and then maybe another note that we could talk about is there was somebody who commented on one of our videos about um you know, maybe if it rains a lot in your area, what you should do, like they're kind of nervous yeah. about having their enclosure flood. Just make sure you put a nice little slope. Happy's area, you know, slopes down to about, you know, about a foot out this way. So if it ever floods, all that water is going to come down here. So at least uh, Happy has a nice high ground area. Um, you definitely want to make sure, you know, you know, you keep that in mind. So that was a great question. Just put it at a slope. Make sure that water has somewhere to go, guys. So we are excited to show you guys when we decided to expand his enclosure, um, you know, and really get a lot more grass for him. Uh, you know, just give him a bigger area to kind of hang out because I can't get over how big he's gonna get, but we're gonna be prepared for it. 
Yeah, we're already thinking ahead into the future. We've got probably a couple more years before we have to really start expanding the yard to let him have some more space. Right. But he'll get so big and powerful that he'll be able to knock over trees. So we're kind of trying to figure out which trees will be happy proof. <laughs> right. So be careful if you decide to build your own enclosure. You know, try not to use just wood or like those chain link fences because Happy's pretty powerful or any other tortoise out there. They can dig right under that or kind of just, you know, honestly plow right through it. We're so excited to show you guys Happy today and for, you know, our new subscribers. Uh, we hope you guys have a tortoise too. If you do, tell us how he's doing in the comments. We'd be happy to hear that. And the um, last video we did of him, we got a, a whole bunch of awesome comments with what you guys have named your tortoises. Yes! So keep sharing those names. They are so cool. <laughs> That's so cool to see how many people have tortoises and the different names. And it's just really cool guys to conversate with you and just get involved. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. And as always, we hope all of you guys have an awesome day. Bye guys.